say it a lot, but we really mean it this time. It is a beautiful day here in Tallahassee. Whether you're at Landis Green or here at Dick Hauser Stadium, to enjoy this matchup between Clemson and the 17th ranked Seminoles. You could be J.D. Drew looking on with Mike Martin Jr. A lot of folks make their way to Tallahassee to check out this series. We are pleased to be here with you. Sean Davison alongside a longtime assistant coach in the ACC, including right here in Chip Baker. We'll hear from Trevor DeGroote throughout the broadcast. But for now, Chip, let's go ahead and take a look at the ACC standings. Both of these teams in the Atlantic Florida State knotted with Louisville three and a half games back of the Fighting Irish, who the Seminoles took a series from recently. And then Clemson, 500 on the year, one game below 500 in conference play. This series means a heck of a lot. And as we transition into the highlights from game one yesterday on the ACC network, the Tigers had a hard time figuring out Bryce Hubbard. They got to him in the first inning, and that was it. Six innings of great baseball by the left-hander. Anglin, the starter for Clemson, also had a pretty darn good start. But Logan Lacey in the third inning laced one, in fact, down the line to play it a couple. Florida State would stretch the lead out to several, but in one swing of the bat, Sam Hall was hauling the mail out to the scoreboard to cut it down to a one-run game. That was until the eighth inning, when Logan Lacey does what he does best as the spark plug for the Seminoles. Several Seminoles in total would go on to play doubles. Matt Nelson with one of his own, and the final score, eight to three in game one for the homestanding FSU squad. And so that leads us to this, and Connor Grady, the junior from Tampa, Florida, who is ready to go in what will be his 12th start this season. Through 55 and two-thirds innings of work. The ERA at 3.56 and what is actually his 13th start. And we are underway in Tallahassee. An off-speed strike to get us started. And so here is Sam Hall leading off for the Tigers. And if you're Monty Lee, it's a good choice to go with Hall. Missed the chunk of the season due to injuries, but he has reached base in every single game he has played in so far this season. He's followed up by Meredith Parker, Grice, Hawkins, Brewer, French, Wagner, and Teodosio. See Connor, Connor Grady going off the plate. See how big the strike zone's going to be. See right there, Monty Lee. Head coach for Clemson. Ground ball right back up the middle, and that on-base streak will continue. Hall gets it started with a leadoff single. And getting that ball into the infield was Isaiah Perry. There's Nander DeSatis, the shortstop, also up the middle. He's joined up the middle of the infield by Jackson Green out on the corners. Logan Lacey, Tyler Martin. I mentioned Perry in the outfield. He's joined by Cabell and Robbie Martin with Matt Nelson behind the plate. Here's Kier Meredith. Sophomore from Winston-Salem, North Carolina, majoring in psychology. Good numbers on a good season for Meredith at the plate. A big walk-off win the last weekend. Hit the ball, did a ton to right field. Maybe it wasn't a walk-off, but it looked like it. He took his time and <laughs> he hit it a ton. The ball is stroke to right. It'll drop in front of Robbie Martin. All slips, rounding second. And he is able to get back in time. So consecutive base knocks here for the Tigers. That ought to put a smile on Monty Lee's face as we take a look at his resume. Now in his sixth season at Clemson, winning 65, rounded up to 66% of his games, including the 2016 ACC Tournament Championship. Grady has 
this inning to down in the zone guy, swing and miss, slider, great changeup. He's had pitches up in the zone. Credit Clemson with two base hits here. Tigers trying to strike first like they did yesterday. Both weekend rotations actually here look a little bit different. Parker Messick with the pulled muscle in his back, usually the Friday guy for the Seminoles. We'll see if he's ready to go on Sunday as Parker goes down the line and Clemson will take the lead. Hall coming home, Meredith rounding third. It's a two RBI double for the shortstop. Mike Martin Jr. already making a trip out to the mound to have a word with Connor Grady. Another pitch up in the zone and did a great job of pulling it down the line. Here, Meredith at first base sees this play in front of him the whole way. He gets the ball, see the ball kick off the corner, knowing he can easily get the third base and round and score. Two runs in for Clemson. Single, single, two RBI, double to get things started for the Tigers. Exactly what the doctor ordered. We take a look at the numbers for Parker over the last seven games in particular. Batting average, nearly 450, 12 hits, seven RBI. Now you can make it nine. If you're gonna to get to Connor Grady, you have to get to him early. Georgia Tech got to him early and threw only one inning a couple weekends ago, then back in, in March, Wake Forest got to him early with two outs in the second inning and got to him quickly. After that, he can get you five or six innings. Caden Grice swinging through strike one. Looking at change up. Got good life down and away for Grice. Impressive numbers for the freshman. He's a two-way player for the Tigers. Has made a couple of starts as their pitcher. Once again, Cincinnati on Sunday and then once in the midweek. But has really made a name for himself this season with the bat in his hand. The slider that was a little bit up in the zone if normally he has that swing and miss stuff that keeps it down. Very hittable pitch. Laid off of it, two strikes here. There's the change up going again. It's not that he, he's pitching that day early, normally pitches Sunday, but Sunday he pitches out in the daylight. Today he's pitching in the daylight. It's not like you're pitching at night, pitching the daytime, so. Can't make that a factor. Ground ball here to second. This will move Parker to third. And for Grady, that's a big first out. A much needed one at that. Florida State. Giving up two runs here early in the first. Infield has come in here for Briar Hawkins. First pitch swinging. And considering the success you've seen above you in the lineup, might as well be confident and take a hack straight away. What's unique, Briar Hawkins, this is his 91st at bat of the year, only four RBI. That's the, they're going to make him get it through you. And he does. Another base hit for the Tigers. That brings in Parker. It is 3-0 Clemson. They have to take the chance to do that. That was a base hit all the way at infield's in or back. That'll bring up Dylan Brewer. Swinging a miss there. Brewer, the right fielder. 
one of three freshmen in the lineup for Clemson. This ball is drifting toward Robbie Martin, charging in underneath it. Two down. Players are going to have to keep checking the wind. A rarity for projected for three days in a row. The wind is blowing in from center field. There's old Glory out there. Blowing in from center field, in from right field. Earlier today, it was blowing from right to left, so that ball there was held up a little bit by the wind. That brings in Jonathan French. On top of all the challenges that COVID has presented to everybody, and certainly there have been some for Clemson, the Tigers have also had to deal with a number of injury issues. Adam Hackenberg, who got the start yesterday behind the plate, was one of those who battled some injury issues early in the year. It was Jonathan French, a freshman, who started the year behind the plate for the Tigers. That ball's down in the dirt. Nelson on the throw down to second. Pulled Jackson Green off the bag. The fourth wild pitch of the year, ball in the dirt. Nelson did all he could, block it and attack, trying to get. Hawkins getting the second base, getting, getting the second base with two out, scoring position. That ball will drift into the glove of Robbie Martin to end the top of the first, but what a top of the first it was for the Tigers. Four hits. Three runs scored, three nothing, Clemson. We welcome you back to Mike Martin Field at Dick Hauser Stadium. And after a tremendous top of the first for the Tigers, it's Keyshawn Askew, the sophomore from Powder Springs, Georgia, majoring in sports communication, who heads to the hill with a three run lead. ERA, a touch above four through 48 and two-thirds innings of work. Great strikeout to walk ratio, 58 to seven. Really utilizes good deception, has that low three-quarters arm slot. Look out for the slur. We'll see it on full display against this Florida State batting order. Tyler Martin as he so often has leads off Logan Lacey might be swinging the hottest bat in this lineup Matt Nelson grabs a bunch of headlines rightfully so Robbie Martin Elijah Cabell Davis Hare gets the nod as the DH DeSatis Isaiah Perry and Jackson Green rounding things out at the bottom of the order Sean Askew is a low three-quarter arm slot it's gonna be tough on these only two left-handed hitters in Florida State's lineup today. The Martin guys, Tyler Martin and Robbie Martin, two left-handers, left-handed hitters. Fastball called ball one to Tyler Martin, criminology major from right here in Tallahassee. He holds off, making it 2-0. and oh. He's reached base safely in 55 of his 59 starts to go along with the numbers that you see displayed above. Watch out, Dad. Tyler Martin hit the ball right by his, his dad down there at third base, Mike Martin Jr. And there you see Mike Martin Jr. in his second season with the Seminoles as their head coach. He's been here. A bunch of years as an assistant, of course, played here. Make it two and two now. Florida State relies a lot on getting on base via base on balls. Keyshawn 
Eskew has only walked seven this year. This ball is drifting toward the tarp in foul territory. It will get out of play entirely. And once again, there's that wind you're talking yes. about, Chip, blowing in from center field over there down that third baseline. It's blowing directly foul. And so saw the graphics, the numbers on Askew, 48-plus innings, 58 strikeouts, but only seven base on balls. You're going to have to earn it. Time. Tying Tyler Martin up, fighting it off. Very tough to strike out. This ball's drifting to center and once again ballooning in that air and coming on to make the play. In center field is Bryce Teodosio. Joining Teodosio in the outfield are Meredith and Brewer. Up the middle of the infield, Parker and Hall. Out on the corners, Wagner and Hawkins, who got the start at third yesterday. We've already mentioned Jonathan French getting the nod behind the plate for the Tigers. one -oh count here to Logan Lacey. Let us sink on that fastball. Keyshawn Askew has a fast arm. That ball comes, arm comes through quick. This ball is drilled out to left. And Logan Lacey continues his hot streak with a home run in the bottom of the first. His fifth home run of the season makes it 3-1. A great answer for that three spot Clemson put up in the first inning. Coming back at a 1-1 ball up in the zone and gave it a ride. You hit a home run today, Sean. You earned it. He didn't just hit a home run, Chip. That flew the shed over that <laughs> left field wall. He hit one to dead center field on Tuesday. He has been the spark plug for Florida State in both of his seasons on that Seminole roster. Came in midway through that shortened 2020 campaign and lit it up at the plate. He can play a variety of different positions, and this year he continues to provide Florida State that needed spark. Go back to the last out in last night's game, a backhand down the line and showing his arm. He, he can play, it, play everywhere. He sure can. And Matt Nelson here. It's a cold strike, so it's 3-1, and this is not a guy that you want to see with the hitter's count. There's a one-out walk to the catcher. And Chip, this is a top five of the lineup that Mike Martin Jr. said earlier this week he really likes. Between Tyler Martin, who we showed you the numbers, finds ways to get on base with seemingly regularity. Lacey, who's been the spark plug. Nelson, who is a shoe in for one of the best players in the country this season. Then you've got Robbie Martin, who for years has been known as RBI Martin. And then Elijah Cabell, and a lot of folks around the country are familiar with what he can do. When it's going good for the top of the order, Florida State can really be potent. Score in bunches as it did last night. A three run in the third and four runs in the eighth. That came in and got him. Runners aboard for Elijah Cabell. Six hit batter this year. And Chip, this brings a scenario that Monty Lee made it very clear he wanted to avoid at all costs. He said, look, we firmly believe that the way you pitch doesn't need to change based on a guy who can hit a bunch of home runs. What we want to do is make sure that if Cabell or a Matt Nelson step up to the plate, 
and you saw the power on full display there, that one was foul. We don't do so with runners aboard. Cabell has two. Two base runners this inning, a base on balls and a hit batter that the guy with great control and ask you. The OPS above 1,000, batting average sitting at 281. That quick arm beating in that one pitch, beating Cabell, fouled it off late. Rung him up for the strikeout look, and that's a huge strikeout for Askew. On that big slurf back door breaking pitch. The bell looking. You see him frustrated over there in that FSU dugout. Here's Davis Hare, one of several pitchers for Florida State that has made an impact with a bat in his hand as well. the count to hair perfect pitch to a guy who's a pitcher at the plate the DH roll today Davis hair you cannot throw a better pitch in a better spot nice job by French behind the plate this is a guy here in Askew who really features those two pitches that we just saw right there, the slurve and then that fastball. Both sides of the plate. Really keeps those hitters honest. That one's down in the dirt. French is on top of it. Eskey was injured back in February. Did not get his first start of the year to March 14th. Who missed about three weeks. Always got to have confidence in your catcher. Jonathan French with the block. 3-1 count. There is an open bag for Davis Hare, but you don't want to send him to it if you're Askew. Nice pitch. Coming in at 93. Monty Lee telling us He's a high 80s, might touch 90, yeah. doesn't have overwhelming velocity. Apparently this, this warm Florida weather is, is treating Askew kindly. It's going to start the runners here. That is foul. Not sure if the 3-1 pitch might have been an automatic take for Hare at the plate. Like Martin Jr. may have flashed it. I wasn't looking for it. Maybe flashed it to go to the 3-2 count. There with only 31 at bats for the year prior to this at bat. Nelson on at second, Robbie Martin on at first. Full count to Hare. Down he goes. And so Askew is able to limit the damage, but the 17th ranked Seminoles respond with a little bit of fireworks off the bat of Logan Lacey. If you're going to hit a home run today, you're going to have to earn it. 102 off the bat, traveling 393 is the definition of earning it here today. Welcome back to Dick Hauser Stadium, a place that for years, plenty of years, has hosted NCAA postseason games. This season, however, they will not. And with more on that storyline, here's the third member of our team, Trevor DeGroote. Hey, Sean, thank you so much. Pleasure to be out here. And, uh, yeah, yesterday the NCAA announced the 20 potential host schools for sites in the NCAA tournament coming up. 
eventually those will be 16. Florida State did not make the cut. But similar to 2019, they also did not get to host. And that was a year where Florida State was very successful going on the road in the Athens Regional and then going on to, to claim that and then also taking out LSU and the Supers to reach their 23rd College World Series. So it's a familiar scenario for Flor this Florida State roster. And with, with a lot of good road series wins against uh, Miami, Georgia Tech, Notre Dame, Florida State is most certainly up to the task. They have the confidence, the motivation, and the experience of going on the road and making a deep postseason run. The key now for Mike Martin Jr.'s squad will be to really continue stacking up wins, obviously, but to fine-tune some things and to lock down some defined roles, especially in center field. That's been a a position where it's been shuffled in and out with a lot of different players since Reese Albert went down with an injury and getting the bullpen right, which has been very strong. But in terms of who gets into to basically get into the right roles, how many appearances come forward, those will be the keys going forward. Sean? Thank you so much, Trevor. There's a big strikeout for Connor Grady. Speaking of fine-tuning some things, Chip, he was looking to fine-tune some things heading into the second. And that's a much better start to this inning than the first for Connor. Center fielder, number 13. Swing and miss, change up. He gets that going, that makes the fastball jump out of his hand and you can start looking for that. He just got the wipeout slider. That was Max Wagner. He struck out Teodosio, the nine hitter. Checked his swing, didn't matter. A better slider there than he threw in the first inning. First pitch strike. Another check swing there from Teodosio. And it'll be called strike two. But Chip, I think Trevor brings up a good point in that Florida State has really played some impressive baseball on the road. And you fine tune some things the way they can also pitch. I'm a big believer in if you can pitch well, you can make a run. You need to get that run support, obviously, but but certainly not outside the realm of possibility for the Seminoles to make a run just because they have to go on the road somewhere. As Teodosio comes up empty, Nelson is just able to complete that throwdown. Nice job getting down the line by the speedy Teodosio and good tag applied by Tyler Martin. Wasn't pretty, but it was an out. <laughs> Nelson blocking it, and you go and you got a guy running almost like a bunt. Back to the top of the order here with two out. Sam Hall. Talk a little bit about postseason. Florida State, there's, everything's in front of you. You play well, you're going to get a good spot in a regional on the road. See the numbers right there present itself. Clemson's battling to keep alive. Finished the last two weeks in, in, into the ACC tournament. A lot can still happen. Florida State does have a lot of team members that played in that 2019 trip to Athens to Baton Rouge and to Omaha. And Chip, too, this is a season where the records might indicate one thing, but there is not a single bad team in this conference. They have all been awfully impressive at various points and stages of the season. Everybody has arms. Everybody has arms, and some of these hitters are starting to pick it up a little bit. Big bullpen there for Clemson. Popped up. The Sadis. Underneath it. And that is a 1-2-3 inning for Connor Grady. Three runs in the first, three outs in the second for Florida State. Young fans making their way into Dick Hauser Stadium, and just like that young lady is making her way into the stadium, Chip, the deal for Clemson this weekend is, is they're trying to make their way into the NCAA tournament, and this would be a huge weekend series win if they can get it ahead of the ACC Conference Tournament. And Trevor, I know 
you've been looking into to Clemson's story and, and what they might need to do to make a postseason run. Yeah, Sean, it's really interesting when you look at Clemson's resume. They come in today with a 23-22 and 22 record, 15-8, and 8, 16 ACC record. And when you go inside the numbers of Monty Leeds' squad, it's really been a tale of two different teams when you really think about it. I mean, they've been excellent in the Atlantic Division. They're 12-4 and four against teams in the Atlantic, including a sweep against Louisville, who's had an incredible season. But then you also look at their schedule, and they've had two big losing streaks, a six-game slide early in the season, and in April they had a seven-game slide as well. In fact, Clemson is 7-14 and 14 in games coming off a loss, and in one-run games they are 3-9, and nine, whereas last year they were 6-0. and oh. So those are the things that maybe the committee looks at in terms of how good are you in crunch time, how good are you in tight close ball, saying, uh, close ball games. So a win today and tomorrow against Florida State, including a deep run potentially into the ACC tournament, would really be statement wins that they will definitely need to convince the committee to bolster that tournament resume. Thank you so much, Trevor. And, and so what that really boils down to here, Chip, is if you're asked you, you've got that two-run lead, important to hang on to it. As we take a look at the resume, some of the numbers that Trevor referenced, 23-22, the record, one below 500 in their ACC record, RPI at 50 strength. The schedule, however, at 14. And he's absolutely right. They've gone on stretches where they've looked unstoppable. They pummeled Louisville. Absolutely pummeled them. As that ball came right on in and got the Sadis. But when we take a look at the ACC teams to reach the NCAA tournament by conference winning percentage, if you're four or so games above 500, you're going to make the tournament about 100% of the time, historically speaking. One to three, 79%. At 500, 77%. 1 to 3 under 500 60% of the time and if you go any further below that you're really stretching it 17% if you're 4 or 5 or more absolutely in the past no chance at least since the tournament's expanded to 64 teams back in 1999 and so that's the scenario that's the reality of the situation and for Clemson at this point time they've got one more regular season ACC series against Duke coming up an opportunity to collect some wins there but make no mistake about it this one here would really be the resume booster if they can get it Let's see Isaiah Perry back in the lineup in center field for Florida State but a show punt at first pitch strike one and swinging and missing quickly 0-2 Wearing a face mask after his injury a couple three weeks ago. Was it three weeks ago, Sean? Then now he still has a seat flap on. He was hit, hit a game he had his first start, midweek game. A couple doubles and he was hit by a pitch. I believe that was against Stetson. Yeah. There's a strikeout for Askew to start the proceedings here, of course. That comes with a runner aboard in DeSantis. That's Q with that light, late movement fastball up in the zone. The three-quarter arm slot, and that ball just kept going up. Perry can not get caught up with it. Brings up Green here. Batting ninth for Florida State. Quick move to first. DeSantis is safe. Ask you with one pick off on the year. Does lead the club in strikeouts. And now has three today. Here's Jackson Green, the junior from Live Oak, Florida. Been putting together better and better at bats here of late. Another check to DeSantis at first. Clemson has a very big ballpark, and a lot of the outfielders used to playing deep. Get Meredith out in left field playing about five or six steps back from the bruised grass, normally where Cabell plays for Florida State. You play deep, you better be able to come get it. He can. 
Count one and one. To Jackson Green. Lifted to right, into foul territory. It'll get out of play. Jackson Green, this past week, has been swinging, driving the ball the other way. Hit a home run a couple weekends ago in Atlanta at Georgia Tech. Left the left center. He's driven some balls to right field, trying to open up the field more. Hasn't had a great offensive year, but he's been putting a battle on the ball lately. The third. Clemson will turn two. And so that's how the second inning ends. The Tigers maintain their lead after a leadoff hit by pitch to Nander DeSantis. Rule it a 5 4 3 GDP. Two run lead for the Tigers in Tallahassee, where it's 76, feels like 84. Wind out of the east northeast at seven miles per hour. Sean Davison alongside Chip Baker, Trevor DeGroat, our entire ACC Network Extra crew here with you. And as we resume the action, we head to the heart of this Clemson order. Two, three, four. Meredith Parker Grice to get us started. Here, Meredith with the single in the first. Batting average now up to 307. Back to back changeups. Oh, and two. Looking for his second hit of this game, obviously, and he's had eight multiple hit games in the last 16 that he's played in. Going back to calling pitches, a lot of times pitching coaches don't like to call changeup first pitch because after you call a changeup, Usually you come in something fast, but Connor Grady's had such a great change if you call it back to back. Fastball there, bouncing to second. Green able to retire Meredith. That's why Jackson Green is in this lineup. It solidifies the defense. One error in over 140 some chances this year. And that is not an easy play. If you bobble it, hesitate. Meredith's going to outrun the play. One out. Took the thought right out of my head right there, big shooter. <laughs> 44 put outs from Jackson Green. Now 82 assist. <laughs> One error. I'll take that any day of the week. 0-2. Oh James Parker now has a team-high 11 doubles. Came into the weekend with a team-high 9. It's up to 11. Tacked on one in the first. It would plate Hall and Meredith. What a season he has had. And so I mentioned that two RBI double. We'll go ahead and take a look at it just for good measure. Hard hit ball down the line. And he stands at second plate and two to get the party started for the Tigers here in Tallahassee. Nelson blocking the change up in the dirt. He is getting the glove down, go forward, attack the ball. Nelson elects to keep the hand out of there, the right hand. Late life on that changeup. That's what took him a little bit in the first inning to get it going. He threw a couple, but it, that last one was a double. We just showed Parker hitting it. That, that there had a lot of late life. Breaking into the right-handed batter. Third strikeout for Grady. 
And that brings up Caden Grice. Skips away and chip. If I recall that Athens regional correctly, a couple of years ago, not just Connor but also C.J. Van Eyck. Whether it was the breaking ball or the changeup, just a healthy dose of that just carved up the Bulldogs in that regional. And when you tack on a hot offensive showing, it just wasn't even close at any juncture. As the Seminoles just steamrolled through Athens into Baton Rouge that year. Trying to work that ball back over the plate. Pitching coach Jimmy Bellinger. Jokingly has a stable full of ponies. And that one came in and got Grice. Take a look. Just trying to, with the back hand, like you turned into it. You just taking a check swing, hold the hands up, and hit the back forearm. Looks like a two out walk, two out base hit. You got a runner on. And it brings up Briar Hawkins. He win his last 20 games coming in to this one. 21 for 63 at the plate, which equates to a 333 batting average. His first trip to the plate here in the first resulted in an RBI base hit with the infield in. Enjoy reading the notes put together by the Clemson Sports Information Director, Brian Hennessy. Just gives you all the notes you want to see right here. Just makes you feel like we're experts reading this stuff. <laughs> Ground ball here to short, and DeSantis makes the flip for the force at second, and out number three. Through the top of the third, it is 3-1 Tigers in Tallahassee. Hard to believe the NCAA tournament is so near, and as we take a look at the active streaks in the country, Florida State the headliners with 42 straight appearances. Look at that gap from FSU to Vanderbilt with a respectable 14 straight. Texas A&M, 13 straight. Florida, 12 straight. But when the fourth longest streak in the country is 12 and Florida State is sitting at 42, you just run out of words. Played good baseball the month of May. There's been some ball clubs, and I've been around here for a while. There's been some ball clubs that had to play themselves into that tournament and none better than the 2019 club. We see the resume for Chip Baker, an assistant coach, not only here, but at Georgia Tech, Virginia Tech, seven All-American catchers. It's good recruiting. Tip the captain recruiting coordinators in those days. <laughs> yeah. the work. Mike Martin Jr. That's one of my All-American catchers right there. I was going to say, that's one of the seven. We used to have some battles. It was fun. I used to put the age factor. You going to let this old man beat you, throwing a ball by you? <laughs> it was fun. <laughs> Here is Mike Martin Jr.'s son, Tyler. Set to lead things off here in the third. Eskew's pitch came already 44 here into the third inning. Tried to hold up the swing, but called for the strikeout. That'll bring up Logan Lacey. And the last time Lacey was to the plate, went pretty well for him. And the ball traveled pretty far over that left center wall. 
sound of it, of it <laughs> said it all. That last pitch to Tyler Martin will make you shake your head because that was nasty from Askew. Going right at your front hip and breaking it over the plate. Keeping the defense honest, trying to put one on the ground on the 1 0 count. The only hit for Florida State is that home run represented there for Logan Lacey. They have earned a walk and a couple of hit by pitches, so there have been several different base runners for the Seminoles. This is the only one, though, off the bat. He quickly touched them all. Lacey to center. Teodosio corrals it. And Chip, I'll say this. Teodosio doesn't have overwhelming offensive numbers either. But when you look at what he's done defensively out in center field, not a single error on the season. Very much the same deal as Jackson Green. You love that glove. And whatever happens at the plate happens. 100 plus put outs out there in center field. Nelson hitting it through the shift. He's got a chance. Yes, he does. Turning it. And he will reach second safely. Nelson first pitch swinging. Infield's in a shift. Sam Hall's playing on the shortstop side of second. And he hits a ground ball that goes through the infield. All the way through the alpha. Outfield playing deep. I mentioned Meredith plays very deep in left field. All Nelson had to do is make sure he touched first and get, makes a good turn and beats the play. Two out double. 14th double of the season for Nelly. Second time Matt Nelson has reached. He walked in the first. Brings up Robbie Martin, who was hit by a pitch in the first. They cut there at the slurve. One thing I like to do as a former coach, I like to watch the outfield throw. You see Martin there hit by a pitch his first at bat. Notice the center fielder plays deep. He can cover ground. Meredith plays deep. He can cover ground, but neither one of them have an assist for the year. Ground ball through. You got a good, great chance to score Nelson. Spotted that fastball outer corner. Crowd not happy with the call. Chip Baker, what say you? He called it a strike. Sometimes you get the bottom part of the, of the ball or the top part of the ball, the bottom part of the strike zone, or vice versa. He thought he had the slider there. One thing the coaching staff of Florida State likes Robbie Martin is you see this last pitch. It'd been a little bit down, been a strike on me. But focus up the middle. Focus up the middle for Robbie Martin. And if he gets the ball in, he can pull it. This ball's popped up into foul territory. It'll get out of play. It'll be a strike on you, huh? Yes, sir. <laughs> I was trying to come up with a yeah. comment to follow that one with. But there's <laughs> Askew is doing what he does best is tough on left-handed batters. Punched out Martin on a tough pitch. Working over Tyler Martin here. I'm sorry, Robbie Martin here. Punched out Tyler Martin. 2-2 Two -two count. Got him. Another strikeout for Askew. This one on a fastball, and Robbie Martin is retired. Askew works around the Matt Nelson double to retire Robbie Martin and keep that two-run lead intact for Clemson. wrap up the ACC regular season the pitcher of the year conversation is certainly interesting Tanner Cole has 
The righty at Notre Dame certainly can lay claim. Maybe Parker Messick, the ace for the Seminoles, could get those honors. He certainly has a claim. And then there's Emmett Sheehan, the righty for Boston College. Any of those three could make a case to be the ACC Pitcher of the Year. But I'll say this, Chip. Parker Messick's numbers in ACC play. ERA at 1.66. Opponents only able to hit 186 off of him. 20 walks to 87 strikeouts through 59 and two-thirds. Awfully hard to touch that. He's my front runner. I give everybody three innings to steal my next line. Mike Martin Jr. has an ace up his sleeve for tomorrow. If Florida State can get this ball game, they got to come back. They're down two runs, but they have an ace up the sleeve, which is number 15. Guys, a winner is the ace for Florida State, Parker Messick. It's a swing and bunt, and Grady couldn't get the handle. Dylan Brewer chopped it directly in front of the plate. One of those good old swing and bunts, Chip Baker. And at this point in time, Grady charges, but just couldn't get the hand on it. He took a peek at the runner. He has to push that ball in the ground. Watch him try to pick it up. A lot of times you see the catchers going out and push it in the ground. You know you're going to get a grip. He knew it was going to be one step, and the guy runs well. Go back and roll that ball out there again. Connor Grady's going to push it and make a quick throw. And that gets underneath Matt Nelson. Brewer advances into scoring position. Swing and bunt. And you get an advance, almost like a sacrifice bunt, but now you have nobody out. Did not close it up, going to his right on that slider. Corners coming in now for Florida State. And here is French. So again, as I mentioned earlier, got some starts in place of Adam Hackenberg. And since Hackenberg has been reinstituted into the lineup, they've kind of platooned there. It hasn't just been Hackenberg and only Hackenberg. French has received starts like you see here today. He's retired by DeSatis, but certainly does his job to advance Brewer to third. And that's a productive out for the Tigers. Great read at second base by Brewer. A lot of times, Etier behind you, he had a great read on that ground ball, knowing his speed. New, new, Knowing where the shortstop is playing behind you, getting the third base to point out. Now the infield's in for the Seminoles. As Wagner, the third baseman, steps up. And there you see them. One and one. Wagner out of Green Bay, Wisconsin, struck out in his prior plate appearance. Hey. Talking situation. Not trying to be so technical with the young ball player, but you look around the infield, they're playing you in. Don't chase pitches down. Look for ball you may be able to get up in the air. Still 1-1 one, one count. Get a ball you can hit in the air, get to the outfield. Begin to make come back here with the old fashioned squeeze, too. But doubt it with the infield in. Number 36 freshman in the ACC, ranked by perfect game in the preseason. Pitch up and off the plate. Off the plate, Nelson wanted it. He set up away. Get the call on the changeup. It goes 2 1. Swing and miss slider. Gets it down and makes it late break. You see the little dot on that slider going away. 
K-time chance on a 2-2. Full foul. I'm watching Brewer at third base, and a lot of times infields in one out, you may be going contact. That ball's hit on the ground, but he did not move on that last ground foul ball. A lot of times you can get a peek what they're going to do there at third. Got him. Connor Grady doing what Connor Grady does. Pitches to good pitches with men on base situation. Who the slaughter got the strike, came back with the changeup to just late life and dove in. Two out, runner at third. In the bottom of the order here with Teodosio. Owen oh one. Yeah, I was loving to hit the replay, especially with Connor Grady on the mound. That ball has such late life in it. Just a healthy dose of off speed and that slider. So Clemson jumped on him in the first inning with three runs because his ball, baseballs he was throwing were up. Tidosio struck out in his prior plate appearance. Batting average now at 229. He's season 02 here. Nelson applies the tag, and Connor Grady with a runner on at third goes off speed for consecutive strikeouts to keep the Tigers in check and to keep the Knolls within two. The veteran Grady on the bump, keeping the Seminoles in touch. Tiger and Seminole fans enjoying the weather here in Tallahassee. Temperature up to 78, feels like 85. It's just semantics, really. Sean Davidson alongside Chip Baker, Trevor DeGroat, our entire crew here, regardless of what it is and what it feels like, it, it just feels great. Seminoles lead the all-time series. Might as well, yeah, go ahead and kick those feet up. Sit back in the chair a little bit and enjoy the, the remaining innings of this one. Five full in the bottom of the fourth here. Still left to play, and here's Elijah Cabell leading things off for Florida State. He wastes no time just jumping on a fastball. That is foul. Still tickets to be sold for tomorrow's final home game of the year. Seminoles.com, you can get some bleacher seats. Come on out. Ground ball up the middle and through. Another hard hit ground ball for Florida State. Matt Nelson rocketed one through the shift for what would end up being a double and then Cabell just bounced one right up the middle as well. Cabell hits the ball so hard. Obviously we see it when he hits it in the air, how far it travels, but that ground ball just had life that just kept Eating up ground as it went up the middle there for leadoff single. So here's Davis Hare. Struck out to close the first. it one and two to Hare from Askew who with his five strikeouts so far knocking on the door of continuing a stretch where over the last four games he's recorded six or more and he's done so in seven of his nine previous starts this season heck of a play out and right and then drops So Cabell retreating back to first when he thought the snag was made. 
is going to be retired. It'll go down to the fielder's choice. You open up as a base runner. See Brewer coming to get it. You see him come up with it, but you don't see him. You don't expect the guy to, to bobble it once he slides like that. Mike Martin Jr. is having a conversation with the crew chief at third base, Tony Walsh. Is that a reviewable call? That's what he's probably asking him. Can you review that? Four-man umpire and crew. Nobody threw a hand in the air. And that's what you look for. Did not finish the play, but Brewer did a good job of getting to the ball and getting his third assist of the year. <laughs> get an assist for that. I was going to say, in a yeah. rare case, the drop actually pays off yeah. where you get the force at second. End of the year, you go, well, hey, the guy has three assists instead of two. And so there's Dylan Brewer. Slider off the plate makes it 2-0 and oh to Nander DeSatis. He was hit by a pitch. A mile high in the air. Hall shading, calling for it underneath it. Two down. Junior second baseman Sam Hall using his hand to block the sun. And you look around the ball field, the sun is straight up because it's yep. not very long shadows. Like to not to wear the sunglasses, trust his hand to block the ball. Sun drenched Dick Hauser Stadium. In fact, the field, the grass looks magnificent this weekend. It's a big word for me, Sean. Magnificent. Triple cut, diamond cut in the infield, outfield. Chris Denton and his grounds crew here at Florida State, and the man Steele put a lot of time. You're at Mike Martin Field. So to go back to the point that I mentioned before that weird sequence out in right, ask you coming into the season, the most strikeouts he had in a game was six. He has six here today now. Perry is rung up. The crowd is not pleased, but ask you will certainly take it. The strikeout machine. It has been so good to see Sam Hall healthy and able to play for Clemson finally this season, and he has made it count already here in Tallahassee. That home run made things a heck of a lot more interesting last night. The Seminoles would stretch it out thereafter, but already today, Sam Hall with a base hit. He's also popped up. He's one for two. He would come in to score in the first after that base hit on a two RBI double by Parker, the shortstop. So like Florida State in the third, here in the fifth, we actually start the inning off with the top of the order. Connor Grady, Grady hitting with a couple of strikes. It's 0-2 here to Hall. Lift at it. Down in the dirt. Nelson is able to complete the throwdown. Looking at the scouts in the ballpark, they watched Nelson all year. Change up down, couldn't find the ball. Where's the ball? Where's the ball? Pick it. He's got a guy running at first, and he threw a missile to first base. Arm strength there, quick release, got, has the angle. Tyler Martin with the uh, put out there at first. Look down to the scouts, and they're in their, their phones making notes. Arm strength. Brings up Meredith with one out. So I'm sure the answer for you would be yes. But I'm still going to ask this question rhetorically. Have you ever seen an ATM play baseball? Because this guy here is making some money. 
And it's not just what he's done with the bat in his hand. It's those kind of plays, too. And you mentioned about the 2019 year of Florida State with the pitching staff that went on. They were pitching to a freshman catcher. This guy behind the play here for Florida State. Count three and one here to Meredith. Wilson trying to get that pitcher strike. Meredith, five foot ten. Listed. Making a full count to Kier, who over his last 23 games is 33 of 88, batting 375, had the base hit in the first. Just a tremendous year. He pokes that to short. And DeSatis retires Meredith. So strikeout, ground out here in the fifth for the Tigers. And that brings up James Parker. Parker now on an eight game hitting streak when you throw in the double in the first. And in the seven prior has recorded multiple hits in four of those. He was two for three yesterday as a matter of fact. Parker hit, mentioned a double down the left field line in the first inning. It's a changeup that was up above his knee, knees. It was not that last changeup that on a Grady threw. 2 1 count here. Fastball away called ball two. Now make it 2 and 2 as he fouls that one off. Watch out, Seminole dugout. There's that Tiger dugout looking on with the two-run lead. That one skips in. Interesting note here on Parker, Chip. He is one of the ACC hit leaders. With the two hits last night, he's in the top five. This one saw it off toward right. Tyler Martin giving chase. Wind blowing it into the fence, and he flips over into the crowd. Going downhill a little bit. Hit the warning track. Great effort, but you have to be careful where you are. A whole lot of people there helping him, and I don't blame him. <laughs> Ball is coming at you. Took a right turn on that warning track. Sometimes you see a lady there getting her head out of the way. But see. Got him. Fastball for the strikeout for Connor Grady. Parker heads back to the dugout. And after a circuitous, to say the least, first inning for Connor Grady, he has settled in quite nicely. On 85 total pitches, he keeps the lead, too, for the Tigers. And as we speed towards conference tournaments and toward the NCAA tournament, it will certainly be fun to see who it is that will make that final dog pile in Omaha. But before we get there, got some other business to settle, first of which being the ACC tournament in Uptown Charlotte, not downtown. Got to make sure you get that right folks in Uptown Charlotte get a little bit persnickety about that but at the AAA ballpark it'll be a lot of fun with that backdrop Notre Dame leading the Atlantic Division Georgia Tech leading the Coastal and as we've mentioned already as this one goes down the line just foul As we've mentioned, everybody in this conference has had their moments where they have looked incredible. And speaking of incredible, I think that word aptly describes the animals of Section B who first sung O Canada during the 1988 Calgary Winter Olympic Games. And it worked. 
it's only weird if it doesn't work. And it worked. So now they've sung it in every home game in the bottom of the fifth since. And I'll tell you what, on the road, neutral sites, they'll still sing it. It's not even just a home thing anymore for the animals of Section B. And folks, when you think of college baseball, you immediately think of the animals in many cases. Jackson Green gave the bat a fling. Both these guys on the mound have some late life. That ball might have been low on me, but <laughs> it was called a strike. And so that's how this bottom of the fifth starts. You see some pitchers on the mound with late life. It's, it's tough. It's the men in blue. It's tough. On a Grady with the late life and his changeup. SQ here with his stuff that just slurred, sinking. Fastball takes off. Green was moving toward first. Thought he had a base on balls. Brings up Martin here. He has pitched him tough today. I was going to say, it's not easy to retire Tyler Martin. Show the numbers how often he gets on base. 0 for 3 in last night's ball game. Reached base twice and scored a run. Be a base on balls. He laid off that one. Back to back, 3 2 counts. Make it full. Ask you at 80 pitches. Trying to retire Tyler Martin for the third time in five innings. Payoff coming. I guess you could say that was a little bit inside. And Florida State has a one-out base runner. Focus something down and in, and then all of a sudden it's behind you. Whoa here. One-out walk. Another walk for Florida State. It's something they do a lot with more on that. Here's Trevor DeGroote. Yes, Sean. I mean, ever since 2010, Florida State has been in the top 10 in walks throughout the entire NCAA. This year has actually been a down year. That walk right there by Tyler Martin, who has been a walking machine this season, brings their total to 228. Entering this weekend, they were ranked 25th. So it's not exactly something that Florida State's been doing at the top of the charts, particularly this year. However, it is a staple of this FSU program. It's something Mike Martin Jr. has had a heavy piece in, plate discipline, and it's proving itself here again this weekend as Florida State continues to chalk up some walks. Thank you so much, Trevor. Let's see Mike Martin Jr. looking on here. The walk giving Florida State a one-out base runner. Lacey lays off that 0-2. And Chip, I'm still just struck. Ask you, really... The two pitches, the, the ability to go either side of the plate has really turned those two pitches and, and made him that much more dynamic. Usually you'll see guys with a three-pitch mix, a four-pitch mix, but he has really done a nice job with two as that ball just drifts foul. Lacey going down trying to get one, and it hooked it foul down a left field line. One of the hottest hitters for Florida State. Used to have bat girls down the foul lines to pick up balls and bring them back and put them in a bucket. Now every foul ball goes down the line. A kid is running down there and he's saying, can I have the ball? And it, all the players have been very accommodating. Why not? Good to see all the youngsters chasing down foul balls, trying to get a souvenir. Great to have crowds back. This one's lifted to left, dropping for a base hit. Logan Lacey now with multiple hits today. We mentioned earlier how deep Meredith does play left field. 
Lacy with the benefit of a base hit because he was playing so deep. Ball in on his hands and fought it off. Did not get a great swing at it. Took a bad swing on the slider, but just blooped out there in front of him. One out here, two on for the very dangerous Matt Nelson. Logan Lacy on at first. Tyler Martin now on in scoring position. And again, limiting base runners when guys like Matt Nelson, Elijah Cabell, obviously for Clemson, a guy like Caden Grice is paramount for both of these teams. Pitch can't get up there, 87. Pitches this inning, so for me, you said in the game. 1-0 to Nelson, trying to keep the breaking ball down, trying to get him a double play. All the scoring has come in the first. Clemson did turn a 5-4-3 double play back in the second inning off the bat of Green. The Tigers got on top of Connor Grady early, plating three. Logan Lacy hit a home run in the bottom of the first frame. And that's where all four runs have come. And now as that pitch count approaches 90, the count to Nelson is 3-0. Nelson is 3-0 his first at-bat. Now 3-0 here in his third at-bat. The first pitch swing and double his last at-bat. Fouled off. Last time up, he hit a double. We mentioned the ground ball through a shifted infield. And he just outran the play into a double. Just a single through the infield shown. That ball off the bat was 110 miles an hour. My man Benny downstairs is on point. 110 miles an hour on a ground ball through the infield. Is that any good? That's good stuff. <laughs> How about another ground ball? This one covered up. Clemson tried to get the force at third, but Wagner couldn't hang on. Parker did a great job getting on top of it, just trying to make a play. That was another hard hit ground ball off the bat of Matt Nelson. The only play he had shown, he went hard to his right. If that ball gets by him and runs scores, then he had a chance to also get a force at third base, throwing the ball to Wagner. Just did not come up with the play. With a one hopper to him. I'll tell you what, too, with the speed Martin had getting in there, it would have been interesting to see if that foot would have gotten in there before the ball anyway. But again, saving the ball from getting through the infield, save the run. Yes, absolutely. The situation as it stands, bases are loaded. As Keyshawn Askew's 91 pitches include 56 strikes, 35 balls. And you're at a really tricky spot of the order. One way to look at it is one ground ball can get you out of trouble. The other way to look at it is if the command issues in this inning continue, you've got nowhere to put guys in the heart of the order that include Robbie Martin, Elijah Cabell, and there's, those are guys you don't exactly want to pitch to in this kind of situation. Traditional. So what's the right combination? What's the right move if you're Clemson with the two-run lead in a game that, quite frankly, you have to win? We're about to find out. Come back and hit first pitch, hard slider, swinging, hit with it. Trust your stuff, and that's probably what the conversation was on the mound. First pitch slider to Martin. That one down and away. You did mention old Canada in section B and the animals were singing it's the fifth inning. Well, something happens here, they're going to take full credit for it up there in section B. Just want to update those of you who might have the scoring books at home that that ground ball by Matt Nelson was ruled a base hit and might I add appropriately so. That was a heck of a job at short. Again, worth repeating by James Parker just getting on top of that. 
first base angle view there. Look for a hard slider. That slurf. Look the fastball turn it down. Yeah. It pits to both sides of the plate. Get great movement. Bonnie Lee described Askew as a guy who can go out there and get you 100 pitches. He's quickly climbing to that mark right here. And on 96, he retires Robbie Martin. Really not fair to a left-handed batter. Come back fastball on the, off the, the plate previous pitch and came back and stuck that one. Be looking fastball. Late swing on a breaking pitch. Two out. And so here is Elijah Cabell. Last trip to the play. Ripped a single up the middle. Nowhere to put him. It's a 1 0 count. A guy who has really matured as a hitter. Has a big opportunity here. That is a quick pitch on the inner third right there to Cabell. Quick pitch for a strike. And then there's the game within the game. That element of momentum. If Askew can get back to the dugout. And he is as few as perhaps one pitch away from doing so. Made him expand his strike zone on the... 1-1 one, one pitch, fastball up. He had him, got him looking his first at bat on his backdoor breaking pitch. That slurve off the plate, broke it back in for the strike. For another strikeout. This ball is hammered to center field. And you can forget about it. Another kabomb for Elijah Cabell. And this one flips the scoreboard in favor of the Seminoles. There's only one guy in America can say kabam, and that's you, because that's, that's your call. <laughs> Went with the slider. He got him in the first time up, got him with the break. That ball was up in the zone a little bit, and board Cabell showed how strong he is and just turned it to center field. And so now here likely comes a pitching change for the Tigers. Great at bat by Cabell. And Davis Sharp, who doubles as an infielder and as a pitcher for Clemson, will get the call for the Tigers. As pitch number 100 for Askew, who battled valiantly. Goes over the center field wall to make it 5-3 Florida State here at Dick Hauser Stadium. Elijah Cabell responsible for the big blast that makes it 5-3 Knowles at home. We welcome you back to Dick Hauser Stadium where Keyshawn Askew was doing everything he could to keep Florida State from jumping back on the scoreboard in the fifth. He was one pitch away from doing so. And unfortunately for Askew, that man you see right there, center of your screen, Elijah Cabell, got a hold of one that he liked and made the Tigers pay. 5-3 Florida State. Clemson trying to record the final out. Davis Sharp getting the call. Sharp, the sophomore from Dakula, Georgia. Quickly working ahead here of Davis Hare. Seventh appearance on the season, ERA at six. 31 strikeouts to 15 walks. This ball lifted into foul territory. It'll get out of play.
breaking ball strikeout. But for the Tigers, it comes one batter too late. Elijah Cabell dropping another kabob here at Dick Hauser Stadium. And as that ball flew over the center field wall, it indeed went kaboom. Well, tip your cap to Elijah Cabell. And I'm sure Elijah Cabell's hat is tweeting something right about now. As we take a look at the bomb squad, the active career home run leaders here at Florida State. Cabell just pulled ahead of Matt Nelson by one. Reese Albert, the third most home runs in his career. And we certainly wish Reese the best. And Robbie Martin with 13 of his own. Reese Albert, a guy, Chip, who just can't seem to get on the right side of that injury bug. Whatever happens, it just continues to just pile up on him. The knee surgery, he's out for the remainder of the season. Saw him down in the dugout yesterday. Seems to be in good spirits. He'll be here all summer rehabbing his knee here in Tallahassee. There's Isaiah Perry out there in center. Ground ball here to the first base side, and Connor Grady covers ground to retire Caden Grice. Nice job the field. Dry air, wind blowing in from center field. Field's starting to dry out a little bit. You can only get so much moisture in that infield. Chopping ball there, Tyler Martin with the play. Connor Grady covering first base for the first out. Here's Briar Hawkins. One and one. Looking to record multiple hit games in consecutive games here. Went two for four yesterday, did Briar. Two and two. Just caught a piece of that one. A strikeout would be Connor Grady's eighth. Again, caught a piece of it. Fouled it directly off the plate. So we've been approaching 100 pitches. And it's late in life. A lot of times, you don't have the the early inning juice in your arm. You have a little bit less juice for that late changeup. He still has great movement in it. That one there. Connor Grady's pitch count starting to creep toward 100. Ground ball here through the left side. Hawkins with another base hit. Still a two-run game here in Tallahassee. And so with Hawkins aboard, Opportunity here coming to the plate for Clemson to tie it with perhaps just one swing of the bat. Job by Briar Hawkins as it's staying with the fastball. Just driving it through the left side. One out single. So here's Dylan Brewer. Matt Nelson getting off the plate to keep that ball from getting to the backstop. Big cut there, goes one and one to Brewer, who Monty Lee said coming into this series, he's one of the guys that he would really like to get going at the plate offensively. That having been said, he still is one of the best run producers, actually one of the best RBI guys on this roster, 29. 
third most in this lineup. Well, the guys are getting over 50 strikeouts and hitting 209, but a very productive 209. Absolutely. Sitting on nine home runs right now. Finds a whole bunch of ways to get it done, too. His walk 10 times. Excuse me, he's 10th in the ACC in walks with his 27. Make it 28. Nelson trying to get it. Catcher using their ankles, catching the elbow out, trying to get that breaking pitch back over the plate. Ball four. As we take a look at the pitches by inning, 24 in the first, 12 in the second, 17 in the third, 15 in the fourth, 16 in the fifth, already 18 in the sixth. And Mike Martin Jr. made a trip out in the first already, so this will be a pitching change for Florida State. After five and a third innings of work, 103 pitches in total, Connor Grady's outing has met its conclusion here at Hauser. Hunter Purdue gets the call from Mike Martin Jr. And the Florida State flamethrower will warm up while we take this commercial break. Connor Grady's day got off to a tough start. But if you look for words to describe Connor Grady, Gritty, grinder, are a couple that I think come to mind almost immediately. He's a steady Eddie guy who has been so solid for Florida State on Sundays throughout his career. Got the call here on this Saturday afternoon. And for Chip, what could have potentially been the final time, walked off the field here at Hauser to a hearty ovation. Remember that young man when he came in the program as a freshman in the summer. And what a ball player he's come and still is. But this crowd appreciated because they're knowing they're not going to see Florida State playing in the regional. And the crowd knows the game. And they gave him a great ovation as he walked off the field. If I would have told you in the first inning when Clemson started off single, single, two RBI double, fielder's choice, RBI single, if you would see Connor Grady make it five and a third, I don't know if the answer would have been yes traditionally speaking but if you take a look at these numbers today it's a testament to how he's really settled in three earned runs four hits no strikeouts in the first the rest of the outing only two hits seven strikeouts over that next four and a third nine of his 13 starts this year have been five plus innings mentioned in the first inning if you're gonna get to him you better get to him early Clemson did but that's all they got Good showing for Grady once again here in Tallahassee. He gives way to Hunter Purdue. Purdue working on French here. And Hunter, a junior from Chesapeake, Virginia, majoring in criminology. Simpson looking at Seminole dugout point. It was down. Nelson makes any pitch down look good. Ball was a tad down. Bottom part of the order here for the Tigers. And you've got a couple of guys here in French and Wagner who they've seen some at-bats, maybe inconsistently so. And so can they come through here in the bottom of the order? Multiple runners aboard. One swing of the bat. Let's not forget, Clemson can take the lead right back. With a guy throwing 97 miles an hour, it would take much to make contact. I was going to say, it's not going to take a whole lot. You don't have to help it. Clemson fans looking on. Not sure if that flow is quite as impressive as Trevor Lawrence, who's now stationed a couple hours down I-10 from us in Jacksonville. But I can respect it. 
Three two off speed breaking pitch ball four. I mean I couldn't throw mine out like that. Could you chip? Back in the day. <laughs> <laughs> Can also respect French's walk to load the bases here. With something going here after Florida State put up a four spot last inning. One out, infield's playing back for a double play. It is Max Wagner. That gets behind Nelson and Clemson. Scores another one. Hawkins comes in to score. It is a one run game. And here comes Mike Martin Jr. once again. Watch what happened here. Nelson did not get the right side leg closed up. You coming in, you have to stop. You do not want to cross that home plate as a pitcher. You catch the ball, make sure you don't get yourself in the path of that runner. All he's looking at is trying to get to the plate. Get yourself clipped from behind. Infield now will be. See how they're going to play this one. Infield back with a one run lead. Second and third here. Max Wagner's probably glad to look at anything other than the Connor Grady changeup. Struck him out twice. Two previous at bats. Corners are in. Middle is back. French on at second. Brewer on at third. It is Wagner at the plate. With a 1 0 count. Fastball down. And Nelson able to block it. He has been kept busy back there. Fastball at 90 something miles an hour and out, out in front of the plate. Just got to, you know, not to look pretty, but just get a piece of it. And that's what Nelson did. 2 0 count. With late movement, that ball had a lot of life that broke in to Max Wagner. A sinking fastball at 98 miles an hour. Super duper slow motion is showing it. It's worth today. Back to back pitches. This one coming in at 96. Wagner did record a hit in his last game played. That was against South Carolina in the midweek. Had a run at third base back in the fourth inning. Did not bring him home. Middle infielders charge in. 99 on the gun. Florida State charges late. That's by design with a hitter with two strikes. Make the hitter feel the defense coming at him a little bit. Got him. A healthy dose of Hunter Purdue's heater retires Wagner. And that's a big second out for Florida State. Big second out after going 2 0, bouncing the first two up there. Fastball for a strike in, and that was the old four seam to just eight the outs out of third. I can guess the two seamer had the late life, and that one there was a straight on the outs out of third for the strikeout. away from Nelson and we are tied Dylan Brewer races in A back and forth game here in Florida's capital city. That was a, shook up Nelson. That was a complete cross up at 99 miles an hour without a runner at second base. If 
Punch in the gut. Jeepers. Sometimes you expect to get crossed up with a runner at second base, maybe once every blue moon, but there was no runner on second base. That's the boy that one mentioned 99 miles an hour. Brennan Stone's going out there. Florida State's athletic trainers had a busy year. Probably first thing you want to do, Matt, Matthew, talk to me. Talk to me. Get, get your breath. Tell me what's going on. The guy feels worse than that guy right there. And Nelson has saved this ball club countless times, blocking balls. But that one there was, <laughs> it was not. They did not draw dirt. First pitch, second pitch after the strikeout. A little bit of a smile on Brandon Stone, Florida State's athletic director. I'm sure that conversation, a bit of dry comments back and forth, and the first thing Matt Nelson did was speak to his pitcher going, I'm okay, don't worry about me. Mike Martin Jr. is going to the bullpen show. So Mike Martin Jr. makes the signal for a new pitcher for the Seminoles. And in the meantime, everybody here at Hauser is relieved and glad to see that after that sequence right there, Punch. one of the best players in the country is A-OK. -okay. Punched in the chest, but first thing he looked for was a runner at third base, making sure he's not coming. That's the reaction right there. That's a ball player. It'll be Jonas Scalaro who gets the call here for Florida State trying to record the final out top of the sixth in a tied ball game here at Hauser. Hunter Purdue was able to record the second out here of the sixth. But getting crossed up with Matt Nelson led to a real scary sequence here at Hauser. And so after that, Jonas Scalaro got the call the junior from Valrico, Florida, majoring in social sciences, and now making his 26th appearance for the Seminoles. ERA a touch above three through 20 and a third, 17 hits, good strikeout to walk ratio, 21 to nine. And Chip, he's quietly had a really nice year. Very much so. Came in as a freshman. I remember him going to Jacksonville and punching out three run, three batters. In, in a save situation of throwing a fastball in, in, in to right-handed batters. He can pitch to both sides of the plate. That's the biggest thing there, communicating with Scalero out there. You know you have a 1-1 one, one count, two out, runner at third. It's certainly priority here, obviously, if you're Florida State. You want to get out number three as soon as possible, but to even heighten the... The sense of urgency, so to speak. Teodosio is the number nine hitter in the order for the Tigers. And certainly prefer to avoid turning the order over with multiple runners aboard at that point. They can pitch up. A lot of times in summer camps, we've always played one ball, one strike count. To try to speed the game up so you don't throw as many pitches. So Scalero came into the ball game as back to back breaking pitches down. One up, one down, three one count. Three breaking pitches in a row. Hit with that one, Sean. Sure did. Make it full. He threw three in a row. Why not four? But he can't stick that fastball in. I was just about to say. Get away with it. So there is a full count walk to Teodosio. Bring up the very dangerous Sam Hall. Top of the order. Sam Hall did record a base hit in the first. Popped up to short to close out the second. Struck out 
in the fifth. Paul, a guy who's got real good speed, can play the infield or the outfield. He's been stationed at second for the Tigers. Snap throw to third. Whoa, whoa that was close. Several times this year, Matt Nelson, Logan Lacey had a timing play on at third base. Nelson calling it, looking for it. Gets it down. It's a it's a close play, but none other than the big pickoff that Nelson drew Mendoza in the Super Regional in Baton Rouge. Probably one of the better plays I've seen in my time here at Florida State. Big time pickoff that Nelson was the instigator in that one as well. That was when LSU's bats were coming alive. They had just put a run across. There you go. You you get the memory on. I remember yeah. the play. Made it 4-2 with a runner on at third, and then the pickoff happened, and that was a huge out number two. I believe it went pop-up to retire the remainder of that side and, and just sort of put a pause, at least temporarily, to LSU's momentum. But right now, Clemson has shifted the momentum in this game entirely. And Sam Hall has worked ahead 3-0 and has lifted this ball to left center field, ranging over. Elijah Cabell secures it to put an end to the top of the sixth. So Scalaro comes in. Gets the Knolls out of the sixth, but we got a whole new ball game tied at five. We talked about ACC Pitcher of the Year candidates. How about ACC Player of the Year candidates? We've seen one front row center here in Matt Nelson. Whether it's been behind the plate, at the plate, you name it, he certainly made his claim. Henry Davis, the Cardinals catcher, certainly has made his own compelling case. And Nico Cavadas, the Fighting Irish infielder, has been awfully impressive as well for Link Jarrett's squad. And so those are just a few of the immediately appealing options for potential ACC Player of the Year candidates. Good to see this one smiling and looking relatively healthy there with what now appears to be a quintuple cup sort of deal. Actually, it looks like he's somewhere in the neighborhood of 10. He may keep count. <laughs> I'm a serious. That's how much he concerned with his body. I mean, he's getting beat up the last inning, but he keep, may keep count of the number of cups he drinks during the ball game. He knows what's going on. It's a good guess anyway, right? Educated guess. There you go. Yeah. Quickly 0-2 to Nander DeSatis. As this one skips to the backstop. So with this appearance here today, as DeSatis goes down swinging, it would appear, based on what Monty Lee was talking about earlier in the week that Nick Clayton will likely get the start tomorrow. It was either a Davis Sharp or Nick Clayton starting Sunday proposition as Nico Baldor steps into the plate here for Florida State. And for those who've tuned in, the Florida State fans who've tuned in throughout the week, I told a couple of stories about Nico Baldor on the back end of his incredible performance against Notre Dame. And there's more to it for Nico, the senior from Tampa, Florida, who's been coming off the bench a lot this season. It's so great to get to know these young men and over at softball, women's basketball, young women as people, not just as student athletes. And his story took a turn post-Christmas on December 28th, where his younger brother, Javi, who was a pitcher at TCC, while they were all home for the Christmas holiday, his mom, just what are the odds? Five o'clock in the morning, wandering around the house, decided to check on the kids. Found Javi unresponsive, no pulse, not breathing. This ball's lifted to left center field, and 
out of the glove of James Parker. Heck of an effort from Parker, the shortstop, and there's Nico's dad, also Javier Baldor. He's certainly pleased to see that, but the point being, it took 12 minutes to revive his younger brother. 12. And he survived. And he is doing well. And after everything that he's been through, physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, and how he's come out on the other end of it, Nico told me point blank, he's been my inspiration this season. And he hasn't had all that many opportunities to come through, but what we've seen here lately is a real inspired effort by Nico Baldor at the plate chip. Tremendous story. I've been known Nico for since the 2019 season here, and I had a conversation with him, and basically the same exact what you told me. He said his brother was texting two days later. That's how you know how miraculous recovery he made. It's effort here by James Parker. He's been a lot of fun to watch, and we certainly wish James Parker the best. As he shakes that one off. And so here's Nico and his dad, Javier, taking a picture pregame. The Valdor family, for those who... Still your baby. Yeah, for, those, baby. for, those, for those who yeah. know the Valdors, know how tight-knit that family is. Tremendous people across the board. And so they've been through it as a family. And they're still tightly knit to this day. Some green fouled one back. It tipped the cap, the athletic trainer for Clemson, Travis Johnson. The work he's done this year to put this ball team back on the field. He's had a bunch of guys who are missing several weeks or months. There's Travis there in the dugout. Got the deep voice. Loved the guy. He's known him for years. He's on the letter jacket this year. Same way with Florida State's athletic trainer, Brandon Stone. Keeping these guys healthy. There's Travis. Make it two and two here to Jackson Green as Baldor waits in the wings over there at first. Check swing. It goes full. Aldor off and running. And Jackson Green earns the walk, so... Aldor being off to the races doesn't really matter much in the moment, but... He certainly was running with the pitch on the full count. Multiple runners are aboard now for the Seminoles. Baldor on at second. Jackson Green on at first. Here's Tyler Martin as we turn the order over. Probably a little smile on his face, not seeing Keyshawn Askew up there, the left-hander. You know, he walked Tyler Martin his last at-bat, threw a ball behind him, but nobody on on a 3-2 count. Walk and a run scored for Tyler Martin. A ground ball here to Sam Hall, who will record the out at first, moving both runners into scoring position. It shows you how good Sam Hall is going hard to his glove side. A thought if he fielded the ball cleanly or maybe a better bounce have a chance to go to second base to get the lead runner in green showing outstanding range a little, a little bit of a bobble but not saying much again using his experience getting me out first 
Big Shooter, I would even submit to you that both of these middle infielders for Clemson have showed tremendous range to their right, to their left. Parker couldn't haul in that fly ball out there on the left center grass, but he certainly gave it a valiant effort. Watch out down there, T. Holt. Florida State's first base coach, Tyler Holt. Another player in the program played 2008, 9, and 10. Very good career, brief career in the major leagues. Played with Cleveland, Cincinnati. Spring training with the Dodgers. He back, finished his degree here. He's the energy for Florida State. Does a great job with the Seminoles outfielders. He's been a staple over at first base for the last several years as well. Here's Logan Lacey facing an 0-2 from Sharp. Fastball upstairs. Comes pitchers on the throw the ball up out of the zone to change the pitcher, make him chase it. That ball was well up. Not much of a decision there for Lacey. He's been swinging a hot bat for Florida State. Sharp, like so many other Tigers, has also dealt with injury issues. We saw Anglin get the start yesterday, but Anglin entered the weekend rotation after Sharp ended up exiting. He was the Friday guy to start the season for the Tigers. And he's been working out of the bullpen, get some time at first as well. And yep. Martin Jr. with the catch at third base, and I've watched him for a number of years. He <laughs> may be the first time I've seen him throw a ball back to the pitcher. Got a little bit of shoulder issue, so he went the old underhand toss <laughs> and got it all the way there in the air. Every now and then you'll see something you've never seen before. Good battle here from Lacey. Sharp after coming back. He went 0-2 and, and threw some sliders up. Lacey fell that last one off before that fastball there. Just held off. The appeal down to the first base umpire Jeff Doy. Results in ball three. Slider off the plate. Knowing you have one of the better hitters in college baseball protecting this guy right here in Lacey. And that's why he's been very productive lately. People are pitching to him. So through the slider on a 3-2. And he just caught a piece of it to see another one. So just to circle back on Sharp. Working his way back. He's been a, a fixture in the bullpen. So Monty Lee said if he does end up getting the nod on Sunday, which he ruled a possibility, obviously now seeing him today, you wouldn't expect to see him again tomorrow in a starting role. If he were to have gotten the start tomorrow, it would have been in a, a limited pitch count kind of capacity. And so it would appear again Nick Clayton will get the nod for the Tigers tomorrow. This ball's lifted a mile high in the air toward right, down the line, into foul territory, and Brewer just lost it. Freshman in the outfield, Dylan Brewer. Goes a long way. Put the glove up. Looking for sunglasses. You need him in this ballpark. He has them on. Just lost it. And so those little sequences, how do they loom, right? That could have been out number three. Instead, you pitch once more to Logan Lacey. And he walks. A little bit up, a little bit away. Dylan's Brewer, Dylan 
who in right field does not have to worry about the sun and Clemson. The sun sets beyond first base. Pretty almost opposite this ball field. Crowd coming alive once again. Florida State trying to generate some two out production off the bat of Matthew Nelson, who has gone walk, double, single. He's yet to get a ball in the air today. We talked about that double hit through the infield. They're going to go out and talk about this one a little bit. How do you like that? A freshman catcher going out there and having a chat with his experienced pitcher. ACC play allows the catcher to wear the hearing ear device from and its communication with the dugout. Florida State does not do it. I'll talk about that in a minute, but they can tell the catcher, go out there and tell him this. Go out there and do this. That's the communication device. You use it in ACC play, but it's not allowed in NCAA postseason play. And that's why Florida State elects not to use it. It's a good point to have it. Hey, go out there and tell him this. Tell him this. Saves a coach's trip. Matt Nelson's batting average currently sits at 331. It inflates to 375 when the bases are loaded. This one is grounded to Parker, who applies the force at second. And the shortstop, who showed great range and ability so far today, secures out number three to keep the game tied. The 2 3 4 2 up. In case you're just joining us here at Dick Hauser Stadium, in the first inning, Clemson jumped on Connor Grady early. Sam Hall with a base hit, Parker with a double, Briar Hawkins with a base hit of his own. It would be 3-0 Tigers through the top of the first. Then in the bottom, Logan Lacey with a bomb to left center, made it 3-1. That was all the scoring we had until the fifth. Florida State loaded the bases, and Elijah Cabell, with his latest kabam, cleared him. And so that flipped the scoreboard for the Seminoles until we got to the sixth. And a couple of balls got behind Matt Nelson after some walks. And so all of that advanced runners brought in a couple. And now we reach a point where we are tied at five. Here in Tallahassee, Florida State just edging out the Tigers in the hit column seven to six. Askew going four and two thirds. The six hits, the last of which being the Grand Slam. Parker and Hawkins, a combined three of six for three RBI. Connor Grady, after that sideways first inning, really did a good job to get through five and a third. Cabell with the big fireworks in the fifth. Lacey with some of his own in the first. And that's really the story to this point. As we reset at the top of the seventh in this second of a three-game set here at Dick Hauser Stadium, Wyatt Crowell, the new pitcher for Florida State. Young le freshman left-hander for Florida State. Pitched only in the fall. <laughs> That six weeks into the season, started playing some outfield to swing the bat. Alex first pitch, hit him right on the elbow. And Kier Meredith leads the club in hit by pitches. That now is his 15th. <laughs> Leaning over, just tucked the elbow to protect your ribs. Getting the elbow down, elbow protection. Made the hard impact. There the six out of ten in stolen bases. Line drive into right center. Meredith running on contact will make his way to third. Parker with another base knock here. This one a single through the right side. And Clemson is in business again. Two pitches in the Crowell's outing. A hit by pitch and a single to right, first and third. That's how quick this game can jump on you. Meredith did a great job of seeing this ball. Once it hit the ground with his speed, he knew he could get to third base. 
That's just a baseball player making a baseball play. So all of this got started with a hit by pitch to Meredith. With more on that topic, here's Trevor DeGroote. Yes, yeah, Sean, actually, their hit by pitches are actually, for this season, is closing in on a history making mark for Clemson. Their on base percentage this season is 107 ahead of their batting average entering this weekend. Well, part of that has been their hit by pitches. For Meredith, overall for Clemson now, with that hit by pitches, 68 on the season, four short of their record for this for a season is 72. So they're really closing in on it as now Clemson takes the lead. Indeed they do, Trevor. And so Clemson is back on top of Florida State in a sequence of just four Wyatt Crowell pitches. Chip, let's take a look. Chopper up the middle. Mercedes has a tough trying to get to the ball and just did not come up with it. The ball did not come up to him all the way through. Scores Meredith easily. 6-5 Clemson here, nobody out, first and third. Brings up Hawkins with a couple hits so far today. Hawkins with a single in the first, driving in James Parker. And then another one in the sixth. His foot, you can hear it. it, is now hit by a pitch. So to Trevor's point, it's been something that Clemson has done quite frequently. And two hit by pitches come here in the top of the seventh. FSU had him loaded in the bottom of the sixth. And they left him loaded. This inning is a fourth and fifth batter. Crowell has hit this year. Check the action in the bullpen. Looks like Tyler Ahern and Davis Hare are getting warm. Signal, I believe, has been made down to the bullpen. Indeed, a pitching change in store. So, again, after Florida State left the bases loaded in the bottom of the sixth, Clemson loads them up here in the top of the seventh. 30 hit by pitches in the last 14 games now for Clemson as they pull out in front again in all of these games, which from here through the remainder of their regular season and the conference tournament are going to mean oh so much. We'll see if they can capitalize when we come back. Tyler Ahern gets the call here for Florida State. Trailing Clemson at home, six to five, the junior from Jupiter, Florida, majoring in social sciences making his 13th appearance on the season with a 2-1 record. ERA at 3.24 through 16 and two-thirds. 14 hits, 17 strikeouts to nine walks. And Chip, he was awfully impressive in relief in the midweek. Very much so. He's the guy that Florida State can come in and throw strikes, get some outs, and that's what you want. He's got good stuff. And he inherits a bases loaded, nobody out situation here. Conference play, Ahern's thrown 10 innings, nine strikeouts. So with Hawkins on at first, Grice on at second, Parker on at third. It is now Brewer, whose first pitch swinging on a fastball. It's 0-1. Clemson had Sam Hall last inning with runners on, swinging at a first pitch here with Ahern. Bases loaded, nobody out. Why not? Looking for a strike. First pitch swinging. Fastball down and away makes it one and one.
Brewer went four for 15 at NC State. But three of those four were home runs. He netted a combined 10 RBI in that weekend set against the Wolfpack. There's that good slider just a little bit down. Replay on this pitch. Nelson trying to get it. Went to the baseball, just below the kneecap. Ball two. Popped up, and Green secures it. Came back in and jammed him on that pitch. With the weak fly ball to Green. The previous pitch down this one here, slider on the hands. Fought, tried to fight it off, did not get enough of it. He knows it. Big out there, one out, bases loaded, can get a ground ball and get out of this mess. And so here's Jonathan French. Mentioned that he is a freshman. Got the start behind the plate. But he is a redshirt freshman. It's going to be one of the more interesting things too, Chip, going through these next few seasons after this COVID year is, okay, we see freshmen on the on the roster. Are they redshirt freshmen? Are they really a freshman? Every school goes yeah. about labeling them differently. Um, but he's a redshirt freshman. And regardless of what happened with the coronavirus, as he records a base hit through the right side, we'll finish that thought in a moment. Clemson tacks on another one off his base hit. It's 7-5 Tigers. One got a pitch up in the zone a little bit. Stayed inside and drove it to right to the right side. You see the ball up. Good swing at it beyond the reach of Green at second, playing double play depth. That's why normal depth, he'd have had that ball, but he's playing up the middle for double play. So just to quickly finish that story, would have had to redshirt last year anyway. Broke his leg in a preseason scrimmage. And so he's really been making the most of his opportunities here this season, filling in for Adam Hackenberg. And now that Hackenberg is back, has done well enough to sort of platoon there behind the plate with him. And you see some Clemson fans certainly enjoying this sequence in the sixth and the seventh where they have flipped the scoreboard right back. Neither team has led by more than two after any inning. Clemson led it 3-0 going to the bottom of the first, but then Logan Lacey's home run made it 3-1. And thus, the Tigers have a chance here to perhaps put themselves in position to have their biggest lead at any point here this afternoon. Max Wagner. Crowd wanted it. Ball's about a ball and a half off the plate. Talk about the red shirt freshman. It, it been in the program in the fall, in the spring of last year. This ball's just off the plate. Nelson trying to get it close. That's a whole year of practicing, you know, up yep. until March of last year. So you're involved in knowing it's a great experience for a red shirt freshman. Slider off the plate again. 3 1 count. As far as you can go here. Nowhere to put Max Wagner, the eight hitter. This inning started with a hit by pitch to Kier Meredith. Hit by pitch, base hit, an error, another hit by pitch, the pop up by Brewer, and then the base hit by French. Make it full. Fourth strikeout today. Max Wagner has struck out not only four times today, but has struck out swinging every time today. It's there. You got to battle it. Did not go down to get it. It's situations. I think it's the third time he's had men on base. Runner at third base. I know three in a row he's had runners at third base. Did not get him home. And so here's Bryce Teodosio. Good 
low slider hitting the, the spot. Clemson with the long pants. They do not have, and they were the first teams to wear the pants without stirrups. It makes their legs look longer and makes the low pitch maybe look lower than it would be if you had your high socks. 333 with the bases loaded. This one's pulled foul. Go back to working baseball camp, Sean, before you were born at Clemson. And I remember getting a pair of those pants, the Clemson players' pants, and they always, always went down to the ankle. Well, I had to roll mine up a little bit, but I had to use them in camp to slide with. They were the first. Bill Wilhelm, former coach, God rest his soul, one of my best friends in the world, Coach Wilhelm. He allowed me the opportunity to work camp and learn the baseball for some pretty good guys. And one of the former players came back from the USA team and had a sweatsuit and just practice in the sweatsuit. Coach is so comfortable to do it. Coach Wilhelm decided to make baseball pants just like that. And that's my two out, two strike story. And you got it in. Yeah. Proud of you. <laughs> Two two now the count to Bryce Teodosio. Did walk in his prior plate appearance, his most recent one that is in the sixth. There is nowhere to put him if he were to walk again. And now the count is full. Back to back three two count bases loaded. Batting average, the highest it's ever been in any season for Teodosio with French Hawkins and Grice on. Coming into today, a little north of 230, but the on-base percentage between the walks and being second on the team and being hit by pitches, nearly 400 for Teodosio. He'll see another one. Went with the fastball in on the hands. Just trying to hit with it, hit, hit your best stuff. As you mentioned, nowhere to put him. Third time in a row. Gidocio with the 3 2 count. Had it last at bat, last inning. The Tigers have turned the momentum. Can they continue to pour it on? Indeed, they can. Teodosio will walk, and the Tigers will play another one. The lead now up to three. Not just changing momentum. Now you flip the top of the order to <laughs> dangerous Sam Hall, the ninth batter this inning. Second consecutive inning now that we have seen Sam Hall. Clemson will bat around the order. And Mike Martin Jr. is going to make a trip out to the hill. Looks like Brandon Stone's making a trip out there as well. Maybe a blister issue, fingernail issue. Flip the fingernails a little bit. Brandon Stone clean shaven this week. in the training room this past week, probably yesterday, and I didn't recognize him. Had full beard all year. <laughs> he has mentioned earlier about Travis Johnston, the Clemson train, athletic training. These athletic trainers, not only they're doing clipping fingernails and taking care of guys who get fastballs in the chest, they're dealing with the COVID issue. And it's since, yep. since last summer. When these young men were signed to, to come to the, the school, tip the cap to these guys because it's been from top to bottom uh, a year. And everybody wants to get it, not saying the season over with, but get the year of COVID over with. Yeah. You have to be honest with you. Want to you want to stay in the game. You're a pitcher, you want, but you have to be honest with your head coach. Yep. I don't have it, coach. I don't have the feel because you, base is loaded. 
And you saw the signal from Mike Martin Jr. We will have a pitching change here in the top of the seventh. Florida State still looking for that final out as Clemson has turned the momentum, has turned the order over, and has a three-run lead in Tallahassee. The Florida State coaching staff trying to figure things out here, get through the top of the seventh. The conversation that there, Sean Mike Martin Jr. talking to Jimmy Bellinger, Florida State's pitching coach, about the issue with his index finger. Maybe it was a uh, fingernail, something, blister. Yeah, who knows? You know, the baseball changed three or four years ago to the high, from the high seam ball to the normal seam. Right. Those high seam baseballs used to give you blisters big time. So we'll see here if uh, Davis Hare, the junior from Guyton, Georgia, who's majoring in social science, can get Florida State through the top of the seventh. 22nd appearance on the season for Hare. ERA at 3.38 through 21 and a third. 18 hits, 27 strikeouts, 12 walks by comparison. Top of the order. And a dangerous Sam Hall. Homered yesterday for the Tigers. Led off this game with a base hit. Hasn't been able to manage much since, but certainly worthy of his spot at the top of the Clemson batting lineup. And we'll see what he can do here. Hard 95 right down the middle. This long inning has taken the life out of this crowd here at Dick Houser Stadium. Not only has Sam Hall returned from injury, but his batting average so far this season up 100 points from any prior. He is retired on the ground out, however, and Florida State does make it through the top of the seventh, albeit though Clemson has played it three more and leads it eight to five. Well, he just put down the phone, but I believe that gentleman is tuned in to the broadcast. And, sir, with that delay, he might be hearing it right now as he lowers himself back into what I believe is one of those buses out there. It's not that you can watch the broadcast anywhere. You can watch it anywhere, even standing on the top of the bus out beyond left field. Tip the cap. That is a very <laughs> yeah. creative way to, to <laughs> circumnavigate the attendance capacity. Just stand on top of a bus outside the center yeah. field wall. All right. <laughs> Going back real quick. Last weekend, Clemson played at Georgia Tech and did not play well. Credit Georgia Tech with the three-game sweep. Clemson driving home, the two-hour drive back to uh, Clemson. There's a wreck on the interstate, I-85. We've all been up through there. A lot of traffic. Yep. An overturned fuel truck which all well, we all need here in Florida right now anyway. But five hours it took Clemson to get home. They had to turn the bus around, go back down the highway. Credit Brad Owens, that did director of baseball ops. I've known Brad for 14 years. He's been at Clemson. Went out, tossed a few hats at some highway patrolmen and got the bus turned around. So it all worked out well. There you go. Sharp hitting that outside corner against Robbie Martin. Four, five, six. Coming up here for the Seminoles. Martin was hit by a pitch in the first. He struck out in the third and the fifth. We go back and had three big runs in the seventh inning by Clemson. Again, eight to five going up. You got a two run lead. Runner gets on. Someone can hit one out. But three run lead. You got to get multiple base runners. Head out of the way, Robbie Martin. Yeah, I was going to say, he got out of the way of that one. Oh. Good kind of sink on that pitch by the Sharp. Has to get Martin getting a piece of it.
Coming into this appearance for Sharp, opponents were hitting around 266 off of him. Trying to cut the check swing at a ball four, but, I mean, excuse me, ball three. Foul ball. Conference play, Sharp has pitched a little, little, little bit over 10 innings, 10 base on balls. Mentioned the sink on the fastball, also has some cut on it as well. Ground ball to Ward, the bag at second. And that's another heck of a play once again by James Parker. He went down hard in that outfield grass and had to feel that shoulder out. Athletic trainer came out and gave him a look and it was a hold your breath moment there for a second. Sharp had to dance around that ball. With Parker playing on second base side, had to come get that ball. Yeah. The opposite way he's normally used to going. Suffice it to say, Parker feels fine and with more on the Clemson shortstop, here's Trevor DeGroote. Yeah, Sean, I mean, Parker's been one of the guys who's been the stabilizing forces for this Clemson defense, and you just saw it right there on display. He's the only Tiger to start every game in 2021. Amidst a year, as you mentioned before, it's a COVID year, a lot of unpredictability, hurt Tigers. We've talked about hit by pitches, guys get banged up all throughout the season. This guy has been the one guy who has stepped up and done a nice job defensively. He's done an excellent job in the field, but he's also done a nice job hitting at the plate. Entering this series, he was hitting 315, nine, du nine doubles, seven home runs. A guy who's definitely produced in all phases of the game of baseball. Couldn't agree more, Trevor. He has been awfully impressive. And what's interesting about what you just mentioned there is that with him starting every game here this season, also started a lot of them last season, wasn't a frequent starter as a freshman, so because last year was short and chip, he has now started and played in more games this season than he did the two prior years combined. Wow, that's a good point there. Clemson has always had good infields. Like going back when Jack Leggett was a head coach, you knew if you're playing for Jack Leggett and now for Monty, for, uh, for Mon Coach Monty, Monty Lee, you have great infielders out there. Great instincts, right three. Got a pretty darn good pitcher in Davis Sharp, who was the ace of this club, battled some injury. And I guess you could say that Davis is plenty sharp through the bottom of the seventh, striking out Cabell and then Davis Hare to pre preserve a three run lead. Good crowd on hand here at Mike Martin Field at Dick Hauser Stadium. Good fans on hand, both in the stands and hanging from the ceiling. Keeping everybody plenty cool here. The fans out there in the bleacher seats are still available. Seminoles.com hit the word tickets. Last night, the highest attended ball game of the year here at Dick Hauser Stadium, over 1,800. Been averaging right about 1,400, maybe 1,500 fans, an extra 300 fans in the ballpark last night. Good to see them. Think about maybe folks of, at home that are rooting for the Seminoles weren't particularly glad to see that contingent there wearing their blue and orange here in the ballpark. Just want to see some baseball. Hey, exactly. First pitch strike here from Davis Hare. Part of the order, two, three, four. Clemson trying to notch their 70th win in the series. Might have saw the graphic just a moment ago. 80, 69, and one as that ball is just tattooed right back up the middle from Meredith. Back up the middle, as you mentioned. A loud base hit. 
the glove up, protect your face, make it a chance that ball may go in there. It's all, rea it's all reaction. And so here is Parker, who in addition to laying it all out at short and making some tremendous plays, has doubled and singled, including just one inning ago. Pop that one back. Fifth time through the order for Parker, who's two for four. Two RBI attached to that double. Got the party started for the Tigers in the first. Coming inside is here. It goes three and one. The Parker, who now has multiple hits in five of his last eight games played. Chopper to Lacey. A chance maybe for two. And they got it. The 5-4-3 double play. Just watch it lay up. You do you get that ball to Jackson Green at second base. An opportunity for him to get a throw off there at first base. But the guy who made the play is the young man right there, Logan Lacey, using this great athletic ability, his footwork, to get that easy throw, quick throw to that young man right there. If he gets his hands on it, he'll get you a quality turn, won't he? Good turn, right. <laughs> Florida State's 20. Third double play this year, they turn. Here is Grice. Big cut there at the 0-1, make it 0-2. One of those double plays was last week when Matt Nelson on a squeeze, tagged the runner coming to third and threw it to second base to get the runner at second. So infielders taking credit for that one as well. Off the end of the bat, it remains 0-2. Caden Grice, who entering this weekend was slugging at a clip at 615. His on base percentage was at 429. That's an OPS of 1044. Member of the Golden Spikes midseason watch list. He works at 2 and 2. He's also the guy who drove in the first run of the Friday night game for the Tigers. And this ball is launched. That, folks, is a parking lot shot. And Caden Grice continues to slug with the best of them this season. Took her out of the ballpark. There wasn't much left in the ballpark. That ball was a no doubter. When you throw it hard, they hit it hard. A no doubter. Balls over the bleachers in right field at Clemson. That was a shot. Might have put a hole in the circus tent. <laughs> Clemson has a party deck out in right field. That ball would have been well over it. Grounder here to Lacey. Across the diamond to retire Briar Hawkins. But out three comes after, goodness gracious, Caden Grice just sent a ball. Maybe back to Clemson. 9-5 Tigers when we come back. 
Ah, uh, yes, the Tallahassee skyline, and somewhere atop it is Caden Grace's baseball. My goodness. All right, we're going to go ahead and take a look at this. It might not be suitable for all audiences because this is violent content. He murdered one. 109 <laughs> off the bat. 430 feet. That's, that That's incredible. Button. You hit one that far, you can stand and watch it. He did. All I can do is laugh. That that's yeah. man. And what a job these Tigers have done. Florida State had all the momentum off Elijah Cabell's grand slam. And what did they do? Two in the sixth, three in the seventh, one in the eighth to lead by four. We talked about pregame. Their back is against the wall. 23 and 22 flirting with a 500 season again. Nobody plays midweek next week with the short week because conference play begins next Thursday. Florida State travels to NC State. And as you mentioned, Clemson hosts Duke. Well, that one came in and caught the status. And Florida State has a base runner here. I think Money Lee's going to ask for a replay on this one. Did he throw the elbow or just trying to turn away from it? Maybe, maybe not. No, they're going to play baseball. This is actually a part of the order that caused some problems for Davis Sharp a couple of innings ago. Nico Baldor was able to record a base hit over the glove of Parker at short. One and one the count here to Nico. Jackson Green then worked a walk, and then after a ground out, Lacey would walk as well to load the bases with two outs. Nelson would ground into a fielder's choice to end the inning. And that was called strike two. Wow. Fouled that one off. Down he goes. Yuku Baldor looking for another multiple hit game this weekend. Instead comes up empty. As you mentioned, Sharp, in the ball game, has had some tough guys that had some good at bats, but he's held Florida State scoreless after Cabell's home run. Grand slam. Punched out five here. Green tried to lay down the bunt. It rolls foul. Again, to your point earlier, Chip, this one will get out of play, but going opposite field, making pretty good contact. Direction not quite there. He's launched a few into the bleachers. You can certainly see the difference. Going to make him expand his zone there in the O2 count. 2.2 innings by Davis Sharp is the longest outing he's had since March the 12th, and he had start against North Carolina. A mile high in the air to center. Teodosio underneath it to retire the side. Excuse me, no, that was a hit by pitch. So no, I, I'm losing track of uh, losing track of the scorebook here. Here we go. Let's go to the top of the order, Connor Martin. Yeah, why not? With two out. Why not?
Fastball strike away from Tyler Martin. Martin had a productive out his last at bat after two runners on. Moved them up over on a ground ball to second. Down in the dirt. To say the scamper's back. Over three day, his scored a run. Been on base via base on balls. Another strike call in a very similar spot to the prior one. Tried to hold up that swing, couldn't do it. French lost it. Martin down the line. He is safe. Strikeout and a wild pitch. Places multiple runners aboard now for the Seminoles. Benefit of the situation. Swinging the ball got away. Just French could not find it. With, with one out, he's out. With two out, you got to throw him out. Extending the inning for the hottest hitter in Florida State's lineup, Logan Lacey. And the Knolls are knocking on the door now. Fastball strike. How big is that home run by Caden Grice last inning? Four runs is better than three runs. Mention two base runners here for a guy who's been swinging a hot bat. French tried to frame that one, and instead it goes one and one. Lacey is protected in the lineup by, hot swinging, by Matt Nelson, who's swinging a hot bat as well behind him. That's such an impressive showing from Sharp. Strike two called. Pitcher's pitch. Starting to reach what that pitch count was expected to be for him. And he has given it all for the Tigers here. Lacey holds off. He's trying to get the check swing. Strikeout for Davis Sharp in the bottom of the eighth to eliminate the threat. The Seminoles with a dangerous hitter and multiple runners aboard were looking to turn the momentum instead. It's Clemson by four. The final frame here in Tallahassee and a huge opportunity for Clemson if they can close it out. Their bats will head to the plate, of course, to start things off. And with more on the Tigers closing games out, here's Trevor Grove. Yeah, Sean, it's been something that the Clemson, Clemson Tigers have been really strong at this year, holding on to leads late in games. In fact, after seven innings, they're 20-0. and After eight, they're 21-0. Very impressive, so they do not let leads get away from them towards the end here. And it's been guys like Jeffrey Gilbert early on in the year who's got three saves, but it's been lately Nick Hoffman who is 4-0 with four saves on the year and a 3.53 earned run average. He even has a, ta a complete game start as well. So these are two guys who have been very good. Chip, these guys are going to have to come. Uh, the, the Florida State lineup is going to have to battle these guys too. Well, uh, big shooter, we had yet another turn of events here, and this involving Mike Martin Jr. Let a little frustration go here down down by four runs, but it started in the first inning. I'm not sure after a pitch, whatever, but Mike Martin Jr. was warned in the first inning. And uh... <laughs> The old days of going out and quote getting your money's worth, you don't do that yeah. because you can get suspended and everything else. And Mark Jr. said his piece. And and 
so here we resume. Hit on the line to center, but ranging over to make the play is Nico Baldor. Baldor with the first pitch by Brandon Walker. Him in the ball game between that exchange or during the exchange. Fastball clocking in at 97. Freshman right here in Tallahassee, redshirt freshman that is. Another fastball strike, same velo. Tenth appearance on the season for Brandon. ERA at 4.26 through six and a third, four hits, four strikeouts, four walks. Back with that hard slider after that 97 mile an hour fastball. More like a curveball, not just a slider, but a hard curveball. Big spin on the curveball. Nelson called it, brought it back up. That slow motion is really showing a spin on the ball today. Ground ball here to second. And that was a really efficient inning for Brandon Walker. The young man with the six on his back needs six total pitches to get through the top of the ninth at House. Davis Sharp started the season as the Tigers' ace. He's dealt with injuries. He's worked his way back. He's seen a lot of time on the back end of their bullpen. And he sure looked like an ace in this relief outing, didn't he, Chip? Longest outing, as I mentioned earlier, in two months. And he has a good off-speed pitch, breaking ball down and in. So here's Sharp, and the line looks like this. You mentioned the length of it, three and a third innings. Has only given up the one hit to Nico Baldor. Two walks to seven strikeouts. After Cabell's home run, you don't even want to can call it a Cabell. After his home run, he has put the brakes on Florida State's offense. Florida State will go three, four, five here. He will have to navigate Nelson, Robbie Martin, and Elijah Cabell at minimum. Again, working back, talks of a potential pitch count. How good does he feel for how long? He's certainly been cruising to this point. Nelson with the slider getting a piece of it, fouling it off. And he fans Matt Nelson. Really pulled a string on that breaking pitch. Big break. Curve ball there, had Nelson out in front. Took a little off of it. See there, he's overextended. Tippy cap, made a good pitch. Robbie Martin here. Robbie Martin was hit by a pitch in the first. He's gone strikeout, strikeout, and a ground out to short since. Major shift on. 
and he hits right into it. Hall retires Martin at first, two down. And so here's Elijah Cabell. Florida State looking for a two-out rally. Clemson looking for the equalizer. And to force a game three rubber match tomorrow afternoon. Cabell two for four today with the single and the grand slam. It is 0-2. First pitch strike probably taken down four runs. Came back and hit with a breaking pitch. Swinging. Got a piece of it. How about another base knock for Elijah Cabell? Big turnaround first, he'll scamper back. Cabell, when he hits a ball, he's hit the ball hard. Ball just had a lot of top spin on it. Not a play at all for Wagner at third. And here's Dylan Simmons. Freshman from down the road in Jacksonville, majoring in exercise physiology. Had a start last, the second game last Saturday in South Bend. Ball up, make it one and one. And the Tigers are perhaps one pitch away. They have some marquee wins already this season. As Simmons lifts this one to right, and it drops. Cabell on the run to third. He'll be tagged out there. And that is how this game will end. It's the first win for Clemson since 2018. The Seminoles swept them at home in 2019 they did not meet in 2020 so you have to go back several years for the Tigers and this is a huge one for their postseason prospects chip on the RPI win on the road your RPI will go up and you got to credit Clemson from battling back and and made it made it pay off for them in the last three of the last four innings so we'll see you tomorrow at one because Clemson has made this series even more interesting with a 9-5 win today. A game with topsy-turvy shifts in momentum. Cabell with the big fly, the grand slam, tilted it in favor of the Seminoles. But Davis Sharp and the Tigers responded in a big way. Bryce with the big fly and a big win for the Tigers. 9-5 the final here in Tallahassee for Trevor DeGroote. For Chip Baker, for our entire team, Sean Davison signing off. We'll see you tomorrow at 1 o'clock, everybody.